KD Plasma is one of the most common used desktop environments on Linux. And one of its main characteristics are its customization capabilities. And not just theming or being able to change your whole desktop layout, but also all of the provided effects, the ability to swap out programs you don't like and the general amount of settings that are available. But having these many options often results in chaos, various problems or even some stuff being broken altogether. And the user has no idea why. In today's video I'm going to talk about my experience with KDE Plasma, in particular KDE 6 and 6.1 and why I think that it might not be the best experience for everyone. So let's get into it. Oh actually hold on a second. This video is explicitly being made as a rant with the things that bothered me personally and shouldn't paint KDE in a negative light whatsoever. Everything I say is completely subjective and you can think of it as thinking out loud. Alright, so now that that's out of the way, let's actually get into it. When I switched to Plasma 6 after the release of Fedora 40, I wanted a clean slate and build a long-term desktop. You know, install everything I need, even the stuff that I use pretty rarely, connect my accounts and sync everything. Sounds pretty easy. However, there were some caveats, whereas Plasma's modularity was kind of a bummer. As it turns out, on Fedora I didn't have a calendar app installed, which I didn't even notice until I tried to add some entries. But why is that? Well, because of their more open nature of designing a desktop environment, I can choose between many different solutions. And none of them really tie into the system itself. This is really great if you want to swap them out, but pretty bad if you are after a complete set of applications. My main calendar is on my phone since I never bothered to switch, so I somehow need to connect to it. On GNOME I would usually just add my account in the settings and it's synced with the default calendar app. After some research I went for Mercuro, which for once looks pretty nice, has the ability to connect my accounts but also integrate them into the calendar widget. But that is only if you manually set it up in the widget settings. Now in theory this works like a dream. However, reality is often disappointing, leading me straight to my second problem. KDE's password manager and keyring, KWallet. So after you connect your accounts with Google, your password, which is needed for the sync to work, is usually stored inside KWallet, which needs to be unlocked in order for the application to access it. Now on other desktop environments, the default one is often the GNOME keyring, which automatically unlocks as soon as you log in. Right, so how does it work on KDE Plasma then? Well, according to online guides and wikis, if you set the same password as for your user account, it unlocks automatically. Yeah, no, it just didn't. Right, so after some hours finding out what's happening and trying to figure out the configs, I just gave up and set no password at all. And KWallet also wasn't the only thing that didn't behave as I expected. I have a personal file server, which I use for editing and all my other work. Now since I personally don't like kernel mounts, which you often see in online guides, but rather use the desktop environment's default functions, since those are usually much less of a hassle and you don't need to worry about clear text credentials or deal with auto mounts starting too soon. Anyway, many desktop environments and file browsers, including GNOME, use a solution called the GNOME Virtual File System, or short, GVFS, which mounts drives in an actual browsable path. For some programs like DaVinci Resolve, this is a requirement for me, as it has its own file browser, which cannot access SMB shares by itself. KD's solution KIO doesn't have a browsable path by default. However, you can get it to work if you install KIO Fuse. On my Fedora system, this was already installed and pre-configured. However, it changed its name every single time I mounted the share, making it very annoying to use. I'm not entirely sure what's the reasoning behind this and maybe I could change it in the configs, but it's additional work. Right, let's move on to another thing that was pretty interesting to me. One of the advertised features of KD Plasma 6 was the reintroduced cube effect, which you can select in the effect settings, but many complained that it didn't work on Arch for some reason. Well the cause of this was that a crucial dependency was missing and that it actually wasn't KD's fault whatsoever. Or is it for not making it mandatory? The thing is that there is no clear answer on where their responsibilities end. 
Is it the job of the distribution to package it? Or is it the desktop environment's fault for not requiring it? Should the feature even be visible if it doesn't work? Or should there be an error message? There just isn't anything that makes this clear. For example, did you note that the allow tearing option in the display settings actually doesn't do anything unless you set an environment variable? This is due to a merge request still being in the works that allows this. Now is it the job of the distribution to set this variable, even though it is technically a bit less secure? Or is it Plasma's fault for not hiding this option? Hmm. It's really fun to think about this actually. Like, I'm not mad at anybody. As a matter of fact, it seems like no one is actually at fault here. Because there just aren't any rules in place on how this should be handled. But this is also kinda good? I really love this uncertainty in some places, because it leaves room for discussion. Whose job is it to implement and advertise a feature? Whose job is it to provide a calendar app with a working integration if the desktop environment can function without it? Is it required? Should there even be an event view like this in the first place? These are really tough questions to answer. While some of them might seem easy, like just provide an info message or ship with it if it's part of the desktop environment, some are really not. Like should you auto-enable K-Wallet or automatically set the user's password so that it just works? But then again, what about those that don't want to save their passwords in the curing file whatsoever? GNOME is often blamed for making decisions that people don't want, but in the end they do have a more coherent and less modular approach, because they somewhat force more dependencies. Depending on the user, this is either very good or very bad, but it also shows that neither of them are really wrong. It's always interesting to see when these two very different approaches collide with each other, whereas someone wants to implement a feature in something low level like Wayland, and suddenly it becomes a whole thing, since not everyone wants to use it, and therefore included in the code. I always say that standards are important, but so is modularity. In the end, everything depends on personal preferences. We can make suggestions, provide constructive feedback on features that we want, and the stuff that might really need some work. But yeah, that's about it. Like I said in the beginning, I still love KD Plasma for what it is, and those were just some observations and experiences that I've made with it. As I like tinkering and trying to figure out how stuff works, this was a very interesting and fun experience. And so was making this video. So I really hope that you enjoyed it and that I could give you some thoughts on how different desktop environments, distributions and individual preferences might affect your experience as well. If you did, then please make sure to show it with a like and also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future videos. I really want to thank you for watching and all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are. I'll see you around.